Today our lecture is all about the concept paper. As we all know, as per the subject matter we are going to discuss, the concept paper is different from the reaction paper. For, even as the reaction paper can deal with concepts, it does not, by any means, go in depth with a discussion of a very idea. A reaction paper is maybe a response to or reflection about things, events, people, and other noteworthy aspects. Also, it forms an assessment in a balanced manner. Now what about a concept paper? What is a concept in the first place? That is what we shall find out. Let us look into the objectives of our lesson. At the end of the lesson, we ought to have defined what the concept paper is, determined the ways a writer can elucidate on a concept by definition, explication, and clarification, identify situations in which a concept paper may be effectively used to improve our society, comprehend various kinds of concept papers. Also, we shall go into the content of a concept paper, the points of view used by writers, the ways in how a concept paper's arguments or details are developed, that is, through their patterns of development, and techniques that authors may employ in their defining of concepts. So, let's proceed, shall we? So here we are. What is a concept paper? Yes, it does clarify a concept in which clarifying such concept means that of dissecting or breaking ideas into pieces so as to come up with a collective definition for thought. So let's say, for example, the word sun. This word is, as what we know it, is that big ball of fire in the heavens giving light to the world. And, as per a more scientific take on it, the center of the solar system. Given this, we are already trying to define a particular concept. But of course, we will not just satisfy ourselves with a definition, but also a discussion of it. In this light, what we know about the sun is our concept about it, composed of either what our denotation or connotation of it may be. Regardless, what is important is the idea that a concept is what we know about something, how we define it, and what it really is to which we give our own explanations, hence the idea of conveying the essence of an idea and explaining it. Now we direct ourselves to concept paper's point of view. There are two kinds of points of view, subjective or personal and objective or impersonal. This goes to say that a concept paper, since it discusses a concept, can proceed to explaining concepts depending on which kinds of concepts. There are concepts that entail a more personal way of explanation, like in some feature articles in newspaper editorial pages where the language can be easier to grasp or understand. Sometimes, authors who use a personal point of view can inject humor aimed at making the article's readers laugh. Examples of this would be the reading selections that may deal with concepts about everyday living, or even those inspirational articles that have to relate with how a common person thinks. On the other hand, objective or impersonal points of view are mostly present in treatises, journal essays, Highly analytical, like philosophical articles, as such are aimed mainly for academic or scientific discussions. Okay, so what composes a concept paper? First, acknowledge is the term or concept or idea that you wish to define, as in the case of Sun in the previous slide. Without a term in its definition, how can you even discuss anything? So have that as the first to consider when it comes to writing the concept paper. Next, we go to the analytic description. Analytic description is so-called since upon explaining a concept, 
there must be an extensive way to break down ideas and tackle them one by one. So, for example, if one has to talk about the sun, it must be understood that there are many things to talk about the sun. So we may go into the definition to what the sun is, then its description, then its potential origin, its composition, how it affects planets, and so on. In as much as it is analytical, there is a sense of probing asking of questions that should contribute to how your concept, the sun, needs to be known. Analysis does not end there, though. There is an enumeration of the different aspects surrounding the concept. Like, if we talk about martial law and define it as it is, there are many angles about martial law that we need to know about. In what way was the concept of martial law was born? What is it for? What countries have implemented it? Were there good outcomes or bad outcomes and a host of other things? Those aspects need to be explained thoroughly and enumerated, as well as explained. Finally, a wrapping up. What are the implications of the concepts that have been discussed? It is concluding, wrapping up the concept, and what can be learned from the discussion of the concept. Now we go to the patterns of development. Patterns of development means that these are the ways on how a writer can talk about his or her topic. We have the following. Defining, which is giving the meaning of the concept. Describing, characterizing the concept giving its characteristics. Comparing, it pits one against another, considering similarities between concepts. Making an analogy, this is similar to comparing, but also includes any deduction about what has been compared. Contrasting, it pits one against another as well, but considers the differences between concepts. Classifying, Arranging concepts into groups based on ways they are alike. Illustrating. Giving proof or evidences so the reader could understand the concept. Narrating. It means talking about the concept. Explaining a process. There is a process wherein it must be explained according to its different aspects. Analyzing cause and effect. Cause and effect in which there is a beginning of what has happened, and eventually there is what is considered an offshoot about the event, and you eventually try to dissect or explain it. Listing, enumerating, trying to take a rundown about what these kinds of concepts there may be. These patterns of development are necessary so as the reader of your academic paper can identify with much ease your arguments or not necessarily arguments what you think are the definitions or the ideas that you wish to explain or extrapolate in your paper. Let's proceed to the different techniques of defining and go through each of them. Number one is formal or genus species. It follows this definite pattern of equivalent or an equation which may be illustrated using the following. Term plus equating verb equals genus or class plus differentia, where term is the word to be defined. The equating verb is is, the genus is a class to which the term or object belongs to. Then the differentia, which are particular attributes or characteristics that distinguish the concept. For example, a robot is a machine that looks like a human being and performs various complex acts as walking or talking of a human being. As per the example above, 
and by following the formula, so to speak, the term is robot, as it is the word to be defined. The equating verb is is, the genus is machine, as it serves as a classification of what it may be associated to, then differentia, performs various complex acts, so on, is called formal because this kind of definition is commonly used in an academic way. Number two, by synonym. Let's go to the example. Another name for hashish is marijuana. Popular slang in the United States also calls it pot or grass. The synonym for hashish is marijuana, as marijuana is the most popular of the term. Hence, they define marijuana by equating said concept with another term. Number three, by origin or semantic history. This means etymology or history of the word. Let us look at the example. The word yoga comes from the Sanskrit root meaning to join and yoke indeed come from the same root. Yoga seeks to join the individual's consciousness to its spiritual source. The writer attempted to trace back the word yoga to its roots, being a Sanskrit word. There is history being included in the definition, so the reader could identify that yoga is not a new word entered in the dictionary. Next, by illustration. This is by showing the characteristics of what is being defined. For example, named for their habit of shedding their leaves in the fall, the deciduous trees include such varieties as oaks, maples, and beeches. Next, by function. It means defining through how the object works, as in the case of the following. A thermometer measures temperature changes through the contraction and expansion of the mercury in it. By analysis, it breaks down a whole into its parts, aspects, branches, system into all its levels, a process, etc., as what can be seen from the following. Example, the Republican form of government has three branches, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. In this case, we can see that there is a breaking down of ideas into parts, this being the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. Next would be by likeness or similarity. This may be confused as a little bit like the previous, which is by synonym. However, the difference is more in how the term is placed side by side with an idea that could further make us imagine what it is like, especially through this example. Brighter than 100 million suns, quasars or quasars stand like beacons on the shore of the universe, billions upon billions of miles from us. Number eight, by analogy or metaphor, for example, it is different from analysis. If analysis means breaking down a whole into parts, analogy is as though comparing between two things in the aim of getting one's point across. Now let's go to the example, as what I've told you. An example would be a peculiar kind of vagabond language, always hanging around the skirts of a legitimate speech but continually straying or forcing its way into the most respectable company is what we call slang. In this definition, we can say that it is trying to pit itself side by side with the idea of a peculiar kind of language, always hanging around on the skirts of legitimate speech. It is trying to give a particular overview about what slang is, defined according to what the perspective of the author is like. Number nine, by contrast means using opposites, like, for example, unlike those of gas, the particles of plasma are electrically charged. Last but not the least, by negation. This means stating what a term is not. It is like giving the reverse of what it ought to be. 
For example, wild rice, a native of American delicacy, is not rice at all, but the seed of a tall aquatic grass. If we can see there, it did not necessarily try to define it directly, but try to use the, the reverse of what wild rice is based on what we think as a rice is not. Now, given all of those different techniques in defining, we can choose which of those we would like to use in our concept paper. It depends on what we desire to implement in as much as we have our own jurisdiction and we have our own prerogative about how to write. Let us now proceed to the example of an explanation of a concept. Read silently and try to jot down notes as to how the concept has been freely defined and in the same way how the definition is being explained. Let us proceed to this example of a concept being defined. As you can see, the author of the short selection is trying to explain something about food chemicals, then classifying them into carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. The author then directed himself or herself to explain food chemicals by breaking down what makes up such food chemicals. He goes on by explaining the sub-ideas just so he or she could shed light on what food chemicals are and what do they do to the human body. As you notice, there is no added reaction or reflection to how the selection has been written. Everything is pure and simple definition of terms and explanations. This goes to show that the concept paper, in its plain sense, is more of a discussion type written work, of course, following the necessary steps on how to write an academic paper. So this is all. If there may be any questions or clarifications about this lecture, feel free to send me a message via Facebook or visit yours truly during consultation hours. Also, requesting for the transcript of this presentation is more than welcome. This is Miss Shirley signing off. Thank you for listening and good day.